Hello students, I am sure that you all would have done your previous assignment and read chapter 1, the Union Parliament. And today I shall teach you chapter 2 in Civics, Union, Executive. We divide this lesson into two units. The unit 1 consists of the introduction, the qualification required to be the President of India, Composition of Electoral College, Election of the President, His Term of Office, Vacation of Seat, the Procedure of Impeachment. And in Unit 2, we shall learn about the powers and functions of the President with regard to executive, discretionary and emergency powers which has been prescribed by the ICAC syllabus. So let's get into the chapter, chapter 2, Union Executive. As you studied, what does the Union Parliament consist of? It consists of the President and the two Houses. They are the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. Let's see what does the Union Executive consist of. The Union Executive consists of the President, the Vice President the Prime Minister and the Council Council of Ministers so it is a legislative body so the union this is for one mark what is a union Executive constitute of or comprise of or consists of. It consists of the president, the vice president, the prime minister and the council of ministers. The prime minister and the council of ministers form a team. They hold collective responsibility and collective responsibility. As you have studied in the previous chapter. Now what happens if a vote of no confidence is passed against this particular ministry? The entire ministry, the entire ministry has to resign. Yes. And so the Prime Minister becomes the skipper of the team. What does he become? The skipper of the team. He keeps his team intact. Okay. So it depends upon him to keep the team intact. And the he, the Prime Minister is the real head of the country. The real head. While the President is the nominal head. The nominal head. He is the ceremonial head. And the constitutional head. Constitutional head. In fact, you can remember the short form of it is NCC. What does N stand for? Nominal head, the ceremonial head and the constitutional head. So the real power is vested in the hands of. Real power is vested in the hands of whom? The Prime Minister. So the President has to listen to the advice of the Prime Minister. And that's why it is said, the Prime Minister is the real head and the President is the nominal head. As you see in the present situation and all, the Prime Minister takes an important lead. Yes? So, the President is the constitutional head of India. According to the Constitution, he is bound to listen or follow the advice of the Prime Minister and the Council of Minister. So though he is the head of the state. So the President is the Supreme Commander of the Defence Forces. And who is the present President of India? Yes, all of us know about it. Yes. Can you guess? Yes, anybody in for the answer? Yes, it is Ramlat Govind. Yes. Can you spell the president's name? 
it is not govind it is kovind r a m n a t h k o v i n d now he is the 14th president of independent india now let us see the qualifications which are required to be the president of india as you studied in lok sabha and the rajya sabha the qualifications which are required to be the member of lok sabha and the rajya sabha now we shall see the qualification which are required to be the president of india so the first one it is always he has to be the citizen of india he should not be less than not not less than how many years 30 years what is the age for the lok sabha member not less than 25 years okay the third one is he shall not hold he shall not hold any office of profit profit under the government so why is this said because he cannot do to work at a time then the next qualification is he has to be qualified qualified for election he has to be qualified for election as a member of lok sabha as a member of lok sabha yes did you all understand children so this is it he should be qualified for the election as a member of lok sabha now any tom dick and harry cannot become the president can the next point is can the uh, president stand for re election the president can be re elected he can be re elected subject to the provisions of the constitution so this is a very important clause he can be re elected as a president subjected to the other provisions of the constitution now we shall see how the president of india is elected in order to know how he is elected we need to see the composition of electoral college so how is the president elected is he elected directly or indirectly yes he is indirectly elected by the electoral college why the electoral college because we have the parliamentary or we follow the parliamentary type of government or parliamentary form of government what is this parliamentary form of government where the prime minister is a real head and the president is the nominal head so now let us see what is the electoral college composed of so the electoral college consists of the elected members the elected members of the two houses of the two houses which are the two houses the lok sabha and the rajya sabha the next particular point the elected members the elected members of the state assemblies state assemblies okay and uh, on the legislative assembly you can call it as the legislative assemblies okay legislative assemblies including the national capital including including the national capital which is the national capital yes delhi national capital delhi and 
the union territory territory and the union territory of puducherry what was puducherry called as before cherry it was called as pondicherry what was it called as pondi it was called as pondicherry which was a french colony so this is the electoral college here you have to note this is very very important now what is the note over here the nominated members okay what the nominated members the nominated members the nominated members of both the houses of the state and the state assemblies are not eligible to be included in the electoral college so who's not elected uh, who's not included in the electoral college the nominated members now you studied this in the previous chapter how many members does the president nominate to the lok sabha and the rajya sabha to the rajya sabha he nominates 12 members the men of repute who are excelling in the fields such as science art social science sport so on so how many members does the president nominate to the lok sabha he nominates two members and from which community anglo indian community if he feels that this community is inadequately represented so let us take a quick recap of what is the composition of the electoral college so before this how is the president of india elected indirectly by the electoral college why electoral college because we follow the parliamentary type of government or form of government so the composition is the elected members of the two houses such as lok sabha and rajya sabha elected members of the state legislative assemblies including the national capital that is delhi and the union territory of puducherry and very important the, here is the nominated members by the president can not are not eligible to be included in the electoral college